Okay, are we ready, everybody? I'd like to call to order, please, um, the work session on Monday, August 25th. Um, as I look around the dais, we are not all present. Um, uh, Councilman Campbell is not here, and uh, sh she was going to come via telephone to us, but has decided the last minute not to. But I think she'll be appearing at one of the other uh, regular meetings, and she'll be at, back at the regular meeting. So we have one item on tonight's work session agenda. The staff will provide the council with an update on the city pavement management program and Luke Albert, city traffic engineer, to present, but then I, so I'm, I'm thinking we don't have all the names correctly, and then I have Mark Gardner, Applied payment, uh, Pavement Technologies. So you were there, I didn't see you earlier. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the Council. Um, tonight I'm uh, pleased to present an update of the City's Pavement Management Program that was uh, previously presented in, in uh, March of this year. And um, as you mentioned, I've got uh, Mark Gardner with me from Applied Pavement Technologies. And before I turn over to Mark, I do want to recognize the hard work of uh, engineering staff members Ron Sifright and Brian Harville, who did a lot of the background work that contributed to the results that Mark's presenting tonight. So with that, I'll turn over to Mark um, for the presentation. Thank you, Lou. So tonight's presentation will really focus to put two items of information in front of you. I'm going to cut to the chase. These items hopefully will be useful to you as you go through your deliberations here shortly on what you're going to do about funding for your road network. We're going to make some recommendations about performance metrics, performance standards that you may want to consider, and the impact, how those performance standards um, dovetail with your with your budget decision and then we're going to show you what the impact of budget levels on roadway network over the next 10 years so that's what this presentation will, will do since uh, late 2013 aptech has been working with city staff to evaluate the pavement management system to make recommendations for treatment strategies and ultimately to come up with a five-year work plan and make recommendations for 10-year budget or do a budget impact analysis. That's what we're going to be presenting, and we finished that work so far. Next slide, please. Oh, I get it. Nice. <laughs> so very quickly in March, we met. We went over some pavement management basics. We talked about typical pavement performance. We reviewed the current condition of Goodyear roads, and we provided some input and recommendations on the FY13-14 program. Since that time, we've completed our evaluation of the city's pavement management system. We've completed our budget impact analyses using about a 10-year window, window of time, looking at the impact of various budget amounts using the pavement management system's predictive capabilities. Uh, I need to turn my page. We're going to be providing, as I said earlier, we're going to be providing information for council consideration on performance metrics, performance measures, and budget amounts and impacts. We're also going to discuss the five-year work plan briefly, but we recognize that that five-year work plan is contingent on your decisions about budgeting. So we can't really come up with a final five-year work plan at this time until we know how much the budget's going to be. We have some givens, some things we had to start with. These are what those are. Every one of those scenarios started with a $2 million budget for fiscal year 14-15 since that was already established. So everything we produce from this point, every time I, everything I present from this point forward will include a $2 million budget for 14-15 and then varying budget amounts for years following that. All of the analyses that we present will show a 10-year outlook. So it'll be funding amounts per year for 10 years and the impact of those decisions on, on the network condition. The pavement management system, your pavement management system, has a flexibility to allow 
adjustment of budget amounts by functional class. So we talked about functional classes when we were here in March. You have arterials, collectors, rural streets, industrial streets, and which ones am I missing? Industrials, right. Um, so we have those, those uh, classes that we're going to be talking about. We can adjust funding appropriation within those to balance the condition, and that's what we've done. In other words, if we provided an even 100% funding for all of the roads, what we'd end up with is a lot of money going towards residentials where a little money goes a long way and the arterial suffering. So we balanced the budget appropriations among it to balance the impact on the network and bring everything up, not just one class of streets. Question that flexibility still exists. Excuse so. Me. Do yes, you mind if in between we interrupt you for questions right on hand? Please do. All right. Uh, Joe, go ahead. And, and again, when you get to the part about the PCI and how you rate it, you can expand a little bit more on that because I'm still trying to get a flavor for how that works. But as you mentioned, as you Peter butter, uh, Peter butter the, the money across, uh, where does safety fit into that? Because I know you're talking about putting the budget on arterials and in residential. But I, I assume the PCI at some point, when it gets below a certain level, you got to put more effort there than on other efforts because safety may be. Is, am, I, am I making some sense here? You are making sense. Safety is a key aspect of the functional class or functional condition of the road. So the, the, okay. typically, when we talk about condition, we talk about functional and structural condition. Both of those are considered in the treatment strategies that you use. Safety, which would be you know you're eliminating rutting so you don't have ponding in the wheel paths and you're maintaining friction so you don't have cars sliding off the road on wet pavement. So when we're looking at treatment strategies and treatment alternatives, we're looking at those that we can apply to both maintain the functional and structural capacity of the road. We did not consider safety specifically. In our, in our discussions and analyses, we did not talk specifically about safety. We talked about, in general, the condition. But that condition does encompass both safety and or functional and structural characteristics. Yeah, my only concern is I realize it's, it makes sense to ensure that it, it, you have a broad uh, brush across all the different roadways, but I also want to make sure, at least from my perspective too, if there's one area or one group of road that could end up, because you, know, you, you could spend a little money and save a lot as a result of accidents or risk as a result of the condition of that road, that that's considered as well. Because, uh, again, if uh, we've been sued before when there's potholes or a variety of other things in which people hit and we're the ones supposedly with the deep pockets they sue so my, my only concern is just to make sure as you go across there and I agree we got to make sure we want to try to bring everything up but there's an area or a roadway that's traveled significantly in which we have a mitigated risk factor there that 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 we may want to address that as can well I, so. can I interject right here because I may have this wrong okay if that was ours but I had reported about a bump that was in the road coming under I-10 north and it was near McDowell, and I had a complaint from it, and so I'm, I'm trying to relate this into this. Would any of this, because that was sort of a safety issue, because when you go over it, if you're going fast, you're going to right, you're, you're going to go like right. this over yeah. it. Um, Mayor, Mayor Lord, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was at uh, Australia Parkway and I-10 there. Um, was it Australia Parkway? Okay. Where there, uh, Thank you. The pavement had buckled um, right okay. next to where the ADOT's concrete pavement was, and right. it left like kind of an uneven and evenness, and um, that is correct. That was a safety concern, and that, that actually fell on ADOT's responsibilities, so we've been coordinating with ADOT and getting them to take care it's of that. It's still but, there, because I, yeah, I, yeah. I drove over we'll it. We'll follow up recently. with ADOT tomorrow. And just, okay, so um, we need to get on top of ADOT on that. Too, because, well, but we, but I, I only brought that up not to, to say you hadn't done anything about it or anything. I only brought it up to say that is a safety issue, um, and our pavement goes right up to near that area that is supposed to be their responsibility, but if somebody gets hurt... Right. That is a safety issue. Mm -hmm. It does have to be addressed, and unfortunately, it's not really... Those are isolated incidents that right. pop up out of nowhere, Truly. and we're using basically a network-level approach. We're looking at the entire network, not at site-specific conditions or considerations. No, I understand so, that. And the example I used is the other day was on 40 Flagstaff. Uh, heading heading west. Okay, uh, I don't I don't know whose responsibility it is, but that road's a nightmare at some points. You know where it's all broken up and cracked, and uh, they've worked on part of it, 
but there's still a lot of it's like that. My only concern when you look at all of it, if you've got an arterial or whatever that is significantly worn, that if it falls below those thresholds, even though it may be um, you're trying to trying to cover a variety of different arterials, that those type of things don't fall too far below. And if we got to find money, then we got to find money to make sure we take the, take care of those kind of issues. But I understand where you're coming from overall. But uh, you know, again, I want to make sure that the safety piece, as we look at overall, if we have some arterial streets that people are traveling, that does not get overlooked in the process. Uh, you know, that, that one, uh, Mayor Lord, uh, Vice Mayor Priscilla, there's certainly you know, in, it's kind of like the CIP. You, when you have your right. five-year plan, you update it every year, right? And there's always the opportunity to move a project in that first year that you know, like, has that need. You know, so I think we. Every year we would reassess the entire five-year plan. So I think I think that would okay. help address some of those issues. And I have one more question. And this is just because I'm learning, you know, in fact, I took all kinds of notes on this one. And um, so it brought it mind because you showed so many, you had the different processes, the slurry seal, the high density, the chip seal. And so as you go through those and read those, what about, do we do we measure any of that by the, the streets that are heavy tra uh, heavily trafficked with trucks? I mean, when, when we do our, our budgeting, if we know that street is a street that we have heavy, heavy trucks going down all the time, do we kind of uh, budget? Change the product change, on that street? Yeah. yeah. And so yes, you do. To meet Some that. of those products are not appropriate for heavy truck traffic. Okay. Um, well, we, we use what's called a – there's – in there, you, one of them was a microsurfacing. Uh, yeah. Well, That's there are three classes of microsurfacing, a class one, a class two, and a class three. Uh -huh. Class three has an aggregate that will stand up to heavy truck traffic and higher volumes of traffic, uh -huh. class one and two. Class two is kind of an average. Class one does not. Uh, the high-density mineral bond is really only for use in subdivision areas. Um, it's only for car use. It's not for heavy truck traffic. So, yes, we do target – the treatment strategies where they're appropriate for the level of traffic, both in terms of volume and weight class, yeah. to the type of vehicles you're going to have on there. You want to say anything on that? No? Thank you. You're welcome. So, let's see if I can remember where we were. Um, we're looking at a 10 year budget. We've adjusted. So really, we're looking uh, for council direction at some point with your deliberations uh, to decide how much money to put towards a budget for the next five years, after which Luke and, and Brian and Ron will be able to finalize a five-year work plan. We have the pavement management system tuned up and ready to be used. We think it's providing excellent, excellent predictions, excellent performance predictions at this point and uh, believe that once a budget amount is set, we can come up with a five-year work plan. Yes, ma'am. Joanne? Thank you. So um, does this encompass, just for memory's sake, does this encompass or is this on top of what Larry presented to us within the last couple months of the um, impact fees and streets we're going to be taking care of projects because of that? Is this on top of that or is this all together with? The, the uh, sorry, uh, Mayor Lord, uh, Can you speak Osborne. up? Just you're, you yeah, know what sorry. it is. Your voice is so low. <laughs> uh, Mayor Lord, Councilor Osborne, the uh, um, the impact fees from streets would be places where you're adding capacity, um, adding new lanes, widening intersections, uh, adding like a, a traffic signal. This would be more of rehabilitating or reconstructing or just mainly preserving. Hopefully, so mostly preserving different. the existing pavement. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And as Mark mentioned, this we have a plan for this year that we're going to you know present to council uh, at the at the regular meeting tonight. So this would be more for starting like next fiscal year, and when, you know when you have um, when you look at citywide needs and so forth. So so like I said, this for this fiscal year we're presenting a plan at the regular meeting um, to, to address this year's needs and this year's budget. But but in in conjunction though. The other plans, the, the widening of some roadways, um, may or may not be resurfaced pavement along with this plan together. I mean, would you be looking at those things together in concert? Uh, uh, Mayor Lord, uh, Councilman Osborne, yeah, absolutely. Like if there's a widening, for example, like we have cerebral widening from I-10 to Van Buren, you would certainly look at. Um, I would hope you would be, but I know Bat and Bill's even said this before. Don't go and tear up that road again. Yeah, you <laughs> would certainly. Using so that right. one as an example, that the the 
the pavement on the, the other half of it would, would certainly need some kind of surface treatment, so it would look like one consistent surface going across. Um, so that's that's the plan would be to, to do them in conjunction. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that streets tell a lot about a city, mm -hmm. um, and so we're all wanting to make sure that our city is looks really good and that we don't have too many incidents or people are calling up and sending letters. And I think you've done a good job, and I think we'll continue to do it, but it sounds like maybe even a better job with this new uh, look at assessing it all. So There's two things you can say with certainty. One is it impacts property values. It does. Significantly. When people come in, they're willing to pay more for property that have nice streets in front of it. Second is it impacts economic development, another buzzword and very important one in your considerations. As you start, when people come in and they see beat up roads in front of the warehouse facilities and the, the roads that they're going to have to get to to get to I-10, to get to out, you know, they're worried. But when they see nice facilities, they're more willing to move their businesses in. So that's a good investment in the future of the city, both in terms of property values and economic development. So we've spoken briefly about performance goals. Uh, performance goals provide you a metric, a basis for accountable decisions. Um, it allows you a yardstick. And that's the reason, one of the reasons why we really encouraged this was as we went through all of the budget impact analysis process, we realized we needed a yardstick by which to measure the end game. We didn't have a yardstick. We could say, you know, the whole network achieved this many points or by class. But what we chose to do was make recommendations on a per class basis. For one reason, the city's pavements are actually in pretty good shape in comparison to a lot of other cities that we've seen. And so you're ahead of the game. We'd like to see you stay ahead of the game. If you were behind the curve a bit, we might talk more about average network conditions. But now that you're kind of on par or maybe slightly ahead of the game with relation to some of the other uh, cities, you're at a position where you can set the bar a little higher. How much higher is what we're going to talk about? Yeah, how much higher is what we're going to talk about? Because the higher you set it, the more it costs to get there. So performance goals do those things for you. They allow you a, a yardstick by which to measure your progress, and they allow for accountability of decisions. When you set a goal, you can show your constituents that you've achieved a goal, and you can tell them why that's important, economic development, property values, all of those good things. So that's why we think performance goals are important. That's why uh, some of that information has been put in your information leading up to this meeting for review, and we've got some recommendations regarding what those performance measures might be. Question there. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. I remember we've had this discussion before about new development. And the standards, when we have new development come in and the road goes in for the first time, about taking a look at those standards to ensure that we're making them high enough to try to get the best use of those developments, especially when it gets turned over to us, what, two years after the warranty? But hopefully we'll get a little more time out of that before we have to, uh, you know, address those issues. Where are we on that as far as ensuring we're either meeting or exceeding those standards as far as the material we're requiring for developers to put in a new development to ensure that we're getting the better deal on that when, you know, we get the roads over, they don't automatically real quickly need to be maintained. Does, does that make – because I know we've discussed that issue before. Yeah, Mayor Lord, Vice Mayor Priscilla, um, we, we have um, – in our engineering standards, we have where the de developer of that new roadway is required to put a treatment, a fog seal on the road at the end of the two-year mark. So that – Two-year fog seal, I'm sure Mark will agree, is a, a really good early-on treatment such that then the city wouldn't have to put dollars in that road, you know, for another few years or, or so to, uh, at a minimum. Well, but, you, but you also feel comfortable with the standards that you're building to ensure that we're getting the best and okay. longest use of that possible road we can't ask of that developer, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Mayor, Lord, Vice Mayor. I think it was in 2012 we updated those um, the pavement standards, and we're very comfortable that we're getting a very good pavement section. Um, I think you'd agree you have some legacy issues that you're dealing with from a period of economic I downturn. I, I know. I understand. Period of so where you have some subdivisions that were partially built, or the roads were put in, then they sat fallow for a long time, and so you're you're probably a little gun shy on that. With the normal process, as the economy continues to improve, um, you'll see less and less of that. And as these roads are built, 
the, the neighborhoods are built out and the streets don't sit there unused for a period of time, the condition that they'll come in with I think will improve dramatically, partially because the cities improved their specifications right. significantly and partially because the neighborhoods aren't being built and then left to sit. Probably sorry they didn't finish the roads before the downturn <laughs> because now our, we do have a little higher standard. You have some things. Yes, ma'am. Sherry? Yes. Uh, when you were talking about the, the seal put on it, it lasts, how much longer than is that going to last to the ones like you said? Because I know we've got some that we've got to catch up, but because that can kind of help us give us a little window catching up to that. So how long do they last now? You're talking about the initial construction or it, well, the seal itself? Well, with this, once we get them after the two years, you said you add the seal on it, and it helps us defer that we don't have to put money in it for a while. So what kind of time frame till those roads? That's a hard one. That's a hard question. It yeah. uh, uh, depends on a lot of things, but typically you would expect at least 10 to 15 years before you'd have to start coming in and do anything to it. Um, you might come in with a slurry seal, mm -hmm. uh, another thin surface, depending on how much it oxidizes and cracks, you're in a, a very sun, pavement sunburn. I don't know if you knew that, but pavement I sunburn. I did not know that. Yes. Um, they sun, and it's called oxidation in our world, but they dry out. The, the, basically the petroleum distillates in the, in the asphalt dries out because of the sun. And so it, uh, they get brittle and they crack. By the, putting these seals on, you're trying to keep that pavement surface rich, trying to keep it from Absor uh, evaporating all of its uh, sticky. So that's a, the technical term. Sticky. Um, yeah. <laughs> You've got me with that's that. That's Go ahead. So you, you, by, by putting these thin seals on there, so if we can get, and I don't know, you know, I don't know what the environment would support, but if we could get 10 to 15 years before we put another seal on, that's pretty good. So the new roads coming online, we have extra time so then we can kind of get everything else up to there. Yeah, oh, no. The, I, now, so what... Okay, so I apologize. I was thinking about after the fog seal. What Luke was referring to, what we're referring to is initial construction. About two years later, you put this, what's called a fog seal on, and it's a spray application of a light kind of oil that re-enriches that surface. And that's just after that, it's coming into city management, I believe. Okay. And then we're talking about that 10 years after that. Okay. okay, so there's that initial, the contractor's required to put that on, and it's an excellent treatment for a relatively new pavement. Seems strange to go out and treat a new pavement, but that's exactly what you need to do to keep that surface rich and vital and to slow down that oxidation and sunburning process. Most of these seals, though, are five to seven. Um, that's after, so when you put it down after the 10 to 15 year mark, uh -huh. you get about another seven, five to seven years life after that on that next seal. So if you go down with a slurry seal or a microsurface after that, the typical life, that can range dramatically also. Okay. That can be 10 years, it can be five, depending on construction, materials, environment, uh, traffic levels, all of the things that go into. So. You sounded, you wonder why we're all so interested because you see when they started doing this to all the streets, we saw the little black, the dark little lines and it going, first it covers it up and then the next week you saw the crack still in there. And so we didn't realize that it was going deep underneath to prevent it more of the opening of the crack. We wanted it to look more like, I guess, a chip seal would look. A chip seal. Now, a chip yeah. seal can, but can still bleed through the cracks. Yes. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll take can off. we the... just make it all black like it was? <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> let's, let's talk about budget amount <laughs> because yeah, yeah, I'm going to need to bump. I'm, we're going to need to run another scenario. <laughs> okay. We're going to put more million dollars in there, there. But we can make it all look like this table. You're going to go find that oil well. That's what yeah. you're going to be. <laughs> yeah, we're going to drill for well, oil. Thank you for all that information. <laughs> Any other questions? Let them continue. So what we have up on the screen now are recommended goals by class of road. Okay, so we talked about PCI targets. We're going we're gonna to talk about goals in terms of pavement condition index, PCI. And that is a measure based predominantly on distress, but also on those other things we spoke about. At the bottom, you see two, two important considerations. Higher traffic volume and speed. This was, gets back to a question that was asked earlier. When we have higher traffic volume and speed, we would expect a higher PCI value. We need to maintain it at a better value for safety. Okay, you want people, higher traffic, higher speed traffic doesn't do well with bumpy roads. It tends to make people do strange things. Lower speed traffic can deal with a bumpier road. 
So when we're talking about how higher traffic volume and speed, we need a higher PCI average. But if we set a higher PCI target and threshold, it costs more. So those are the two givens. As we were talking about these PCI, as we were talking about these targets and thresholds, two questions came up consistently. One was, is this an average standard? Is this a gold standard? Is this a sub-average? Where does this standard sit? So in answer to that question, I would say that this is a, an aggressive standard, slightly better than an average for an arterial and probably collector roadways. Based on your current conditions, I think you can pump up the volume a little bit, move the bar up just a touch. So that may be a bit more on the aggressive side in terms of setting a PCI target. You can set these numbers wherever you want them. The key is they need to be achievable with your budgets, sustainable over time, and reflect the goals of the city, growth, economic development, all of those things. So as you consider what you want these numbers to be, we're recommending these numbers, but in your deliberations, these numbers should be considered right alongside of your budget because they are going to guide what your budget might try to achieve. So this would be our recommendation. It is kind of an aggressive recommendation for the arterials and collectors. That's a high PCI target to achieve on average. For your industrials, you have some industrials that need some work. What we'll show you in just a minute is your current industrial condition is pretty low. We'd like to see those get better. And that kind of fits in with some of your plans for economic development as well, uh, businesses that are coming into town. And then your residentials and rurals are pretty close already. I think it's just more of a maintenance function there. The second question that came up was, how do these standards compare to other cities in the area, in the valley? Get that question over. Right. It's always, and, and it's not unusual. How does, how does it compare to Mesa? How does it compare to Peoria? All of these other cities. And the, the answer to that really is, you can't compare it. Um, Luke and I think and Brian and Ron went to a, a conference, a pavement management conference, not long ago here in, in the area. And most, many of the cities in the area presented their standards at that conference. Every one of them was somewhat different. Some of them base it on average, network average. Some of them base it on two classes of streets or four classes. Some of them, you know, it depends on budget. It depends on your traffic mix. It depends on the objectives and goals of the city. So it depends on so many factors that people go in different directions with it. So you could set PCI or performance metrics for just a network average if you wanted. Say we want a network average of 75. What I think that does is it loses a lot of your industrials and rural streets off in the weeds and it heavily overcompensates on your arterials and your residentials. This way, you have accountable decisions for all your functional classes of roadways. Well, I think everybody around this table thinks of economic development, and uh, we certainly want to keep pushing that, and I think streets have an influence on it. It, it will. I mean, it Is will. The way Chandler started, besides the, uh, the, the underneath the dirt, did they uh, have good streets? Is that how they became what they became? Uh, Yes, uh, Mayor Price Road comes to mind. That's really what created uh, not just the roadways, certainly, but the infrastructure, right. utilities exactly. as well. Now, so we get to the current condition, where you are right now compared to those PCI goals, those targets and thresholds. Uh, we considered where you are right now when we made recommendations for those targets and thresholds. The yellow numbers, the yellow shading indicates those where we're close. We're within a few points, actually within five points. The green is where we've met or achieved that goal. The white's where we're not quite there yet. So from that, you can see your network average PCI is slightly less than 70 right now. You're close on three, and you've got some work to do specifically on the industrials to get them up. Luckily, I apologize, I did not introduce our multimedia presentation. Uh, Luke and, and Brian and Ron prepared some maps. These maps show the functional class. 
So as you're looking at the PCI targets and we start talking about arterials or collectors or residentials, if you want to know the breadth, the scope of that, all of those red lines up there, I-10 isn't red, is it? Well, it's kind of red and blue. That'll be confusing, but you know where I-10 is. All of those red lines up there are arterials. The brown are collectors. Um, the really light blue ones are private communities. The black ones are residentials. Am I getting this right? There's a few green ones here and there that are your industrials. They're right over here, a couple up there, and then the rurals, the dark blue, which probably get confused with residentials. So if you want to think about the scope of those numbers, you might want to think about the, 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 the coverage. I mean, obviously, when I look up there, I see red and I see black, which tells me arterial and residential are your big, are your big areas. But you can't forget about those industrials and their impact on the businesses coming in, the heavy businesses, the ones that are going to be pumping through a lot of money. If that sounds horrible, I apologize, but... I have, a quick, I have a quick question on your multimedia presentation here. Yes. And it may, because I'm colorblind, I'm not quite sure. Um, when we look at, like, McDowell to the 303, now that it's open, would the other side of McDowell now be classified as an arterial, and would citrus now be classified as an arterial? Because it looks like it's rural now. Would that be changing? The, um, Mayor Lord, uh, Council Mayor Loretano, um, that, that, some of those sections are still like an old county uh, roadway um that it, it's like a two-lane road that, that is it an old county standard that we'll we'll still maintain um uh, you know get up to city standards typically we reclassify them once you start getting some development and the road starts getting built the city Kinda standards like Saraville was for a while there before the uh, county yeah, yeah, mayor that. lord that's correct so typically we leave them as a rural classification while there's still that rural standard of roadway construction because then they really get maintained as they there's, there, there's different treatments you would use on rural roads from urban roads, so to speak, and we then keep them kind of um, until you get some more business and so forth into that rural type of a roadway classification, if that, if that makes sense. This is living, by the way. This is a, a living thing. It, it changes over time as your growth comes up, as roads get reclassified. So they're not those things aren't set in stone forever and ever. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So this dashboard really gets to the heart of the matter. It says, what's going to happen if you spend $2 million a year, $3 million a year, $4 million a year, and $5 million a year to arterials, collectors, industrials, residentials, rurals, and the network average? What we like to see are big green dots. What we don't like to see are big red dots. The open circles are about the same, and the yellow ones are a slight decline. So really what you can see and what we found when we started using the pavement management system to run through this, at a budget level of $2 million a year, you're in slight decline. Now I'm going to go back to a question that was asked because it's important, and it's the question that, that uh, Council Member Osborne asked. And that is, does this take into account growth? Does this take into account future development? The answer is no. What this does, this is a projection based on the information that's in your current pavement management system. So you have to consider, I apologize, you should consider growth in addition to what this means. I want to come back to that because it's really important. As roads get wider, as they get greener, as you put more pretty stuff along them, they get more expensive to maintain per foot, and they add to the burden of your budget. So this is a projection. What we had, the tool we had to make budget projections was based on what exists today, not based on what will exist five or ten years from now. And that's why the comment I made earlier on the new stuff coming in, especially in the residential, some of the others, that are standards, and I know we've made some of those changes to make those standards a little higher, then we try to set our goals a little higher there to try to forestall some of those 
I know it's going to cost. It always does when you add more. But if we stall those costs because we up the standards, they last a little longer for the maintenance kicks in. Well, so I think we spend a little more effort on that front end, too. That will help us as well. And doing what the city's done mm -hmm. by improving the standards that they did in 2012, they basically put the burden on the builders right. to build a better product right. so that you weren't stuck with a headache when you inherited it. Right. So that like you that. have something that you can, and as we discussed in the March meeting, preserving a road mm -hmm. takes a lot less money than rebuilding a road. No, I understand. So we're functioning, we're mainly focusing on getting roads so that we can preserve them not have to restore or rehabilitate them. So this is the second part of what I told you I was going to provide you, and that is the impact on network with budget. What we see from this is if you want to make a gradual increase, an ever so gradual increase in your condition, you're going to have to spend about $3 million a year based on current network size and condition. If you want a, a pretty impressive increase in condition, you're going to have to ramp it up to about $4 million a year. And I'm going to change the slide on you now and show you all the guts, feathers, beak, everything. You know, this is, every this is everything. This is all the hardcore numbers. I apologize for the small type. It does get way down. I have to use my mind, too. Bigger up there, but I, from the screen here, I have to look. Understand completely. So this shows you the current conditions. It's there. It's on the kind of center. And then vertically, 3 million, 4 million, and 5 million, and the impact of budget as compared with those PCI targets and thresholds. There's a lot of information to digest there. But what it says is you get nice little bit of increase, a little bit of improvement at $3 million. Since there was a decline, we didn't show $2 million on this graph. Also wouldn't fit on the page without the type being too small. So with a slight increase improvement over time, a $3 million budget. If you notice, a $4 million budget gets you a pretty substantial increase improvement. That's a pretty big jump, though. It is, it is a big jump, $2 million to $4 million from mm -hmm. current. Appreciate that. Another question that came up was, and I believe it was the city finance director that asked this when we ran this by him, and that was, do we have to do this now? Can we do this a little bit at a time and build? Absolutely. This is not a you have to do this tomorrow at, forevermore. This is uh, something, we're putting information there to show you kind of qualitatively where, kind of where we are with current condition and the impact of those budget decisions. But we certainly recommend or recognize that you may have to grow into this as more revenue streams come into town. It may be something that you grow into. As our economic development grows and as we sell more homes. And as as all of those things all happen, so. all those, uh, those, those oh. few subdivisions that need to have houses in them, right. they start having houses come under the, the coffers. Then. Bill? Have you... I would assume together put this, these numbers together. Have, are you able to break this down by that three million dollars? Is it, you know, uh, sixty percent going to arterial? I'm not going to do the math in public, but you know what I'm saying. Have, has, I know exactly what you're do saying. Do those percentages equal percentage of that dollar figure to to go Across toward that? So the way we. I apologize. The way we started this, and we had to boil this down so that this wasn't a four-day presentation, um, for your benefit. Um, the way we started with this, we just let the program run amok. We, tell, we turned everything on and said, go. And we figured out that it was treating some roads three times before it ever got to some other roads that were being ignored. And so we started, and that's why I mentioned specifically the adjustments to the funding levels that we did, the balancing of the funding, so that we got, and we tried to do that. We didn't specifically set it uh, so that it would so much for arterials and so much, as much as we set it so that we would equally improve all classes kind of the same, at the same pace. Otherwise, and if I remember right, and hopefully Brian can help me, if I remember correctly, we saw a dramatic jump in residentials. Um, 
residentials and rurals, wasn't it? Residential. Residentials mainly. Just dumped all kinds of money into residentials. Everything else kind of suffered for a little bit and then struggled to catch back up again. And so we recognize that your residentials are, for residential streets, they're not in that bad of shape. At a 66, you know, approaching 70, they're not in that bad of shape. So we can bring them up gracefully while we use some of that money to bring all of everything else up gracefully with it instead of dumping a whole lot of money in it because it represents a significant area of your network. Program in seeking to improve the network average throws the least cost treatments at the highest area that it can. And that's how it brings up the network average, but that comes at the expense of some of the other classifications. So industrials never got touched. They stayed at a 50 and declined from that. So I think the answer to my question was no. There's not specific dollar amounts targeted to each Well, we can tell you what, we could easily tell you what those were. I don't have it with me. No, 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 not right the now. The payment management system will tell you, we have, right now, we have a spreadsheet that's a relatively lengthy yeah. spreadsheet that shows every project that it recommends to be done by year for the next 10 years. So we could theoretically identify then how much um, is being spent on each class of road. Yeah, if we if we elected to skip a year in rural and do and use that money for something else one year or not do it in another year, we can kind of theoretically play with those numbers until we get we and may want to go 2.5 in one year and 3.5 in another year and so let's talk about we'll that. We'll know what that what those decisions actually mean in the in the terms of roadway. That's the practical reality of the process. Each year, when you go out and you do all of these treatments, you guys say, yes, here's your budget, there's your treatments, go do it. These guys go out and do it, and then they resurvey the streets, or need to resurvey the streets, and come back and say, okay, here it is. The pavement management system gets updated and updates all of this. So it recognizes that the roads that have been treated now have a PCI of 100. The roads that weren't treated drop down a few points. We've got all of that, and it updates the projections. And then these guys that have been working so hard with me the last few months go in there and listen to the input that the public gives them through you and say, oh, wait a minute, we got to do this road. So you push that one up. Well, that means something else gets pushed down. Mm -hmm. That's the practical reality of this process. What we do is make recommendations based on the pavement management system that says, okay, for 10 years, by this network size and current conditions and those things, Three to four million dollars, but then the fine tuning happens every year, and it happens because roads get added in, and uh, one road gets diverted traffic on it, and it gets beat up a lot faster than we thought, and all of those practical realities. So this becomes the conversation that we say, in theory, in theory, right? This is in theory. This is in theory. And there's a practical application. And then there's about the it. practical reality of what happens each year. They're going to talk to you about what we've kind of put together, they've put together for this year, and then, so it's, this is a never-ending discussion, aren't you? So, aren't you? just to add, Yay. so basically what we've done here <clears throat> through this process is that we have upped the knowledge of the department um, on how to track all our streets. So that, that's where the biggest improvement has been in the department. Uh, we did, we have some of it, but not quite this reminds you of the budget, <laughs> you know, uh, performance-based budget. Budgeting, it's kind of the same thing that uh, you now have something, that, a tool that you can go to. Um, so we should not have incidences where we have a road that isn't where it should be. So, Well, let's, and then, so I'll, okay. I'll talk about that in my summary and give just yeah, another but, minute. Because just before, I'm going to interrupt, we have a, we have a, public hearing, we, so we have to start at 6 o'clock on the okay. regular meeting. So you, it's not you. You're not no, doing no, all no, the no. stuff. I'm looking at you. At you. Bill always what she's worried about is I need to be done. He says one thing he thinks I'm blaming. I'm not. Yeah. But we that was because you were pointing I was pointing him. I know. Sorry, Bill. It's this one and one more slide. Guilty, uh, this guilty. slide says, first of all, we have to recognize that we have to periodically update the PCI values. Yeah. And that's a, that's a cost. There's a cost to doing that. So we would recommend that the city make an effort to periodically update those PCI values uh, consistently. Um, we've Does provided... Is that in the budget? 
We, is that already in? Uh, is that worked in this figure? Um, it, we would we would need. Um, it's it's not built into those numbers, as, um, Mayor no. and Lord. Oh, but it would be. But we would have to. to uh, we would okay. have to account. We would have to um, account for that when we put in budget requests. Okay. All right. Go ahead. We've provided performance goals for your consideration. Uh, we've provided. It looks like an annual budget in excess, right at three million or a little more, mm -hmm. is necessary if you want to consistently improve your system over time. This is a living plan. Uh, annual updates, the practical reality, the process I just spoke about. And then I wanted to reemphasize the need to consider network growth as you deliberate your budget amounts, what you think you're going to need. Please take into account budget growth because as roads get, as roads get greener and wider and all of those things, and as Sedea and La, La Brisas and Australia Mountain Ranch, as all of these areas come in, as examples, yeah. they're going to add to your burden. That's the end of my presentation. I apologize for going long. But you don't have to apologize. I shouldn't have interrupted you the way that I did it because we still have 15 minutes. But I just wanted to make sure because we were getting very involved in this, and I'm sorry, I was getting a little nervous at the time. Is there any other questions on this? No, let's go Joanne? Oh, I just wanted to thank you for the research and the surveys. You know, this, this certainly gives us a guide, and that's what we needed to know. Um, I hope that as it's going to be very interesting budget year this year because we've had so many great impacts that we've heard about parks and transportation and the roadways and you know it's so much to have to look at all together though I mean rather than it's great to say this oh we want to put four million dollars we can't say that <laughs> you know we have to look at the whole picture well, you can but you won't well, touch your parks yes, or yes, your exactly yeah. exactly when we say four million but only two hundred thousand here you know it's it's a balancing game we all know that but it's great information and I think the fact that you have this tool now that you can continue annually building upon is wonderful so I appreciate it thank you Joe yeah, I too appreciate the uh, presentation. What I kind of take away from the whole thing is that if we stay at two million, it's going to be like a dog chasing his tail. I mean, at some point you're going to keep going in the wrong direction. And so, if I'm understanding it correctly, so we at the rate we're going, it's just going to deteriorate. Some parts of it deteriorate, deteriorate, especially as we grow, and if we don't put the money in there. So it's just a matter of how we ramp up if we're going to try to keep our roads up I would, properly maintained. Would that be accurate? I would also tell you that it's going to deteriorate slowly for now at about a uh, you're at a, about a 68 network average. Right. At about a 60, you start seeing an increase in the rate of deterioration. Okay, that's what we're so too. not only is it going to continue to deteriorate, but it's going to deteriorate more quickly. Yeah. Um, you're, you're blessed to not be in a very wet environment, so that may temper some of that because that's national average. But um, yes, but answer your question. Yeah, and, and I appreciate the staff's effort on upping the requirements for new development that will help us put a little more of the emphasis on the new con new development so it kind of postpones a little bit on the maintenance and I appreciate those efforts because that will help us also trying to keep these roads up to speed so and to me the roads like the way we keep the community trimmed and how we keep our landscaping done all says it's a committee uh, community on the up not on the decline so to me that's all part of the economic development and bringing businesses here is that look and feel of your community so if if we let that deteriorate, then that overall impacts where we're going as a city, which I think would be the wrong direction. So Bill? I appreciate the efforts. Is this, um, this is more for the city manager. We um, are going to be embarking on this. Um, what do we talk about in the retreat discussion in the next couple of weeks? And this was not on the list of things that were in the um, survey that we took. Is this something that, should make that list, shouldn't make that list. Where does this for every sit retreat, for the for retreat? retreat? Retreat or budget, either one. Yeah. Priority issue, I, I don't know. So I'm yeah, uh, Mayor, Council Member Stipp, I didn't answer it a couple of ways. The, the focus of the retreat is, is really what the Council wants to have as far as the, the subject matter. The survey that went out focused on the master plans were recently completed. General plan, transportation master plan, parks, trails master plan, economic development, some mag studies, et cetera. Um, and, and that incorporated the, the citizens and committees that, that have come up with uh, what, what they'd like to see in the next three to five years. So that's a starting point for it. 
Um, if, uh, but we're certainly looking for what council wants to try and achieve out, out of that, uh, out of the retreat as well. So could this be talked about? Absolutely. Could this be talked about later as we start to get into the budget process? Absolutely. There are, um, whether it's talked about at the retreat or not, this will be talked about, uh, I would presume, in a lot more detail as we get into the budget process. I would only imagine that, you know, if, if the parks plan needs $2 million and the transportation needs $2 million and the streets need $2 million and you know, we're going to be talking about a lot of money. And if we're, we're trying to set priorities on these plans mm -hmm. that are simply plans to advance and we're not talking about, a ma you know, about maintaining what we already have, Maybe we've got the cart before the horse. I don't know. And, and thank you, um, Council Member Stipp. The other thing is, is we have in this year's budget $5 million for what we call uh, our asset management. We do have money set aside in the in road uh, maintenance, but it's also to take a hard look at that as we look at all our assets, whether it be buildings, whether it be parks, as a maintenance side of that, that that's what those dollars are set for, and they will be allocated by Council as, as we get into this fiscal year as well. That was a good starting point to try and um, put, get enough money to, to address our most serious needs. Um, uh, and so council will we'll be back before you uh, with the use of those funds as well. Well, this certainly has brought awareness to us. This uh, It's a great briefing. Thank, thank you. Uh, very useful, don't you all agree? Absolutely. Well, thank you very yes. much for coming. I'm going to adjourn this meeting knowing that we're going to be back up the dais and start at 6 o'clock. This meeting's adjourned. Thank mm -hmm. you.